Okay, well, I want to welcome everybody here today. You know, if you look around the United States, there's a lot of bad weather out there. I know where I'm at here in Charlotte, North Carolina. It is cold and it is rainy, and but not near as bad in other parts of, this, of the country. So perhaps you've seen me or have heard me at one of your conferences over the years because I spoke at quite a few home inspector conferences over the year. But my name is Jerry Eisenhower, and I've been in the chimney service industry for a little over 40 years. And for the past 10 years, or actually going on 12 years now, I started a coaching and consulting and training company called CBC Success Group. And we're based here in the Charlotte, North Carolina area, but we work all over the United States. And we do coaching, we do training, uh, we have an online training platform, those kind of things. I specialize in chimneys, but I actually work with a lot of different home service companies across the United States, and I speak quite a bit. I've authored nine books that are on Amazon at this point, and I've got my 10th one coming out, and I write a lot of articles for the chimney service industry. And today, the purpose of today's seminar is to make you aware of how you can profit by adding the service of chimney inspection to your home inspection industry and why it's the perfect add-on service for a home inspector. Because one of the things about the home inspector is you're probably one of the most trusted inspectors that comes into the house by your customers. And I know what it's like. Many times you feel like that you are simply a force that people use your opinions, your findings as a negotiation tool, which is very true. And I understand that because that's the way the American consumer is. But I want to share with you today how you can utilize home inspection, excuse me, utilize chimney inspection as an add-on to your chimney, excuse me, your home inspection services that you offer. So the first question is, add-on services, why do it? Well, it's really simple. If you're in business today, there's a general thought process for business, which is we need increased profits. We need to add to what we do. Some years ago, I was speaking to a gentleman who had come out of the carpet cleaning business, and he was super successful in carpet cleaning, and he had actually become a coach and consultant and speaker. And I was asking him, I said, how many services does a carpet cleaning company offer, a progressive carpet cleaning company? How many did they offer? And the answer was, there's 32 services, 32 and they vary tremendously. But I think that's what every company has got to do is they got to look at what additional services can we offer. If we look at McDonald's Corporation, McDonald's started out selling four items, four items. They sold hamburgers, they sold milkshakes, they sold soft drinks, and they sold french fries. And if we go into McDonald's today, we see that they have greatly enlarged their menu offerings. Also, McDonald's came up to a conclusion some years ago, which was their restaurants were only being utilized for lunch and dinner. So what did McDonald's do? They stepped out of the comfort zone and they started offering breakfast. And now they look at it and the McDonald's Corporation, extremely large, feeds millions and billions of people a day. And people are lined up to get their Egg McMuffins, their sausage biscuits and everything else in the morning going through those lines. If you look at Starbucks, Starbucks serves much more than coffee. They serve all kinds of flavor coffees, all kinds of different things. So in growing a business, being able to do add-on services, additional products that you can profit from is a definite way to, do, to add to your profit picture. And that's what I want to share with you today is, why is chimney inspection one of these? You know, I have spoken this year, I think, at eight different home inspector conferences around the United States in the year 2022. I'll be speaking it more in 2023. And this is what I'm seeing. In the world of home inspectors, this is what progressive home inspectors are doing. I heard the term in this home inspection industry of ancillary services. 
and I call it add-on services. But when I look at it, progressive home inspectors are taking their income to a much higher level. I'm seeing them do pool inspections, radon inspections. I'm seeing infrared inspections. I'm seeing all kinds of things being added. And in my opinion, one of the most natural ones is going to be chimney inspection. And as I show you the various revenue paths that you can pull from this, I want you to understand also that chimney inspection is the only, only inspection that has a National Standards Bureau that recommends it to be done on an annual basis. And that is the National Fire Protection Association and their 211 standards. And the 211 standard of NFPA 211, what you're seeing is you're seeing a recommendation by the National Fire Protection Association that every chimney in America be inspected on an annual basis. And what this is resulting in is tremendous backlogs because there's simply not enough skilled service technicians to do these inspections. And that's going to be part of the business model I'm going to take you through in a minute to suggest that you look at. Because what can happen here is if you properly promote this, you can have people calling you to do chimney inspections that could well deliver to you a revenue amount that could be equal to or even above what you get for a complete home inspection. I'm very serious in what I'm saying here. Not only that, if you do this right and you build your network of marketing up with other companies, you could be getting a tremendous amount of referrals from, believe it or not, chimney sweep companies because they've got customers calling them every day and wanting someone to tell them. Can I use my fireplace tonight? And the problem is the chimney sweep, the chimney service company is then saying, I'm sorry, sir, I can't have anyone at your home and catch these numbers until January. I know some companies right now that are booking all the way out to April. April of 2023 is the first opening that some companies have. Now, Remember what I'm saying here. This is for a chimney inspection required by the National Fire Protection Association to be done on an annual basis. Now, many of these chimneys do not require sweeping for this inspection to be done. In fact, there's many things about inspecting a dirty chimney that I can see more as a subject matter expert when the chimney is dirty than it is clean. And that's what we train you in the training that we do of how to recognize what the problems are that are out in the real world out there. So again, there are three streams of revenue here. And I want to repeat that. There are three distinct streams of revenue. The first stream is where you add chimney inspection to your home inspection service. In other words, you are already doing part of a chimney inspection, but you're not going all the way. So by offering a at the addition of a complete chimney inspection to your home inspection is going to be a significant way to increase the revenue that you have. Now, as we go through this, AJ, if there's any questions, I need you guys to put them into the chat bar. And then, AJ, if you would, just simply alert me there is a question. And I'm not going to be watching the chat bar. I'm going to be talking to you. But I'll stop and answer any questions as we go over this. This is a one-hour session. If we have to go over to get your questions answered, it's not a problem. I'm right here with you. So, again, revenue stream number one. Add it to your home inspection services. That's where we're seeing progressive home inspectors taking the revenue stream from home inspection, doubling, tripling, and quadrupling through it. I'm amazed at how many home inspectors are doing sewer inspections, are doing pool inspections, are doing infrared inspections. They are adding on the services to the home inspection. Now, what it's going to require you to do is you've got to market that service and your home inspectors have got to sell it when they're on the job site. 
and come up with your marketing program of how to put this together. And we're going to talk about some of the marketing ways to do this as we go through this one hour session with me. Number two, and I think this is the most highest potential for you as a home inspector, where you offer chimney inspection as a standalone service. In other words, consumers call you and you go out and do chimney inspection when consumers call you for it. There's companies across America, and I'm going to give you a range of prices. There's some market areas that you're going to spend $149 for this inspection. I can also tell you that there are chimney sweeps in this country that are now getting over $400 to do a chimney inspection. That's right, over $400 and even higher. So there is a tremendous sales, excuse me, profit potential here. Another revenue stream is many times when an inspection is done, problems are found. Now, why is that? The reason is probably less than 3% of the chimneys in America have ever been professionally inspected since the day of their construction. So it's not uncommon that a competent chimney sweep goes out to a home, does an inspection, finds issues in the fireplace, and the consumer is looking for a second opinion. And what you offer is, is what we call a non-vested opinion. In other words, you're not selling the repairs. You are simply serving as an inspection force in order to verify that damage or bad construction or whatever reason is present in that system. The consumer is willing to pay you to come out to give this non-vested second opinion because you're not selling the repairs. And many times consumers will contract with myself as a subject matter expert to give them this type of inspection. And believe it or not, I have people that I fly across the United States and do this in homes across the country because they want someone that can come in and give them valid, up-to-date reasonings and the opinions of, is this chimney suitable or is it not suitable to be used? So those are your three revenue streams. Number one, add it to your normal home inspection service as, your, as part of your home inspection offerings. Number two, as a standalone service and market in your market areas that you do chimney inspection. Or number three, again, marketing to consumers that you can provide a second opinion to verify or discount the opinions that have been offered to them in regards to their chimney or fireplace conditions. You see, and that's, and that's again, this is your problem. Consumers are often waiting months to get a chimney inspection and they just give up. And what happens here is, since they can't get anyone out, they go ahead and have a fire in the fireplace. And guess what? They, have, they become a statistic because then there is a house fire. I work as a subject matter expert in the litigation industry, and I actually work in lawsuits also when fires occur across the United States. And there's a massive shortage of qualified chimney inspectors. When you look out there in the real world at the number of houses that exist across America, according to the best that we can come up with, there are probably around 60 million, I repeat that, 60 million chimneys in use in the United States today. And that is just a rough, figure based on my studies of the data that we can accumulate, but we can't actually come up with that amount. But look around yourself. How often do you inspect a, chim a home that has a fireplace, has a chimney on it? And keep in mind, we're not just talking fireplaces. We're talking about chimney and venting systems that vent domestic hot water heaters, that vent uh, gas furnaces, 
that that vent all appliances, furnaces, boilers, all of these, and we have a massive amount of freestanding appliances that are also in the field. And all of these systems, no matter what the fuel is, by NFPA recommendations should be inspected. And I repeat that word, inspected on an annual basis should be done annually. But again, the issue is the consumer cannot find anyone that can come out today or even this week or next week to do that. Could you provide that kind of service to consumers? How long does a chimney inspection take? To be honest with you, you should be able to do a, a decent chimney inspection in well under an hour once you get used to using it with the proper tools and those type of things. So it's a miraculous financial boon for your company to be able to offer this. You see, a chimney inspection by a chimney sweep will often reveal issues in the chimney. However, there's often a doubt by the consumer. Does this really a problem? Because one of the things about it is, in the chimney service industry, usually a competent chimney sweep company is doing the repairs. So they have a vested interest in this inspection. In other words, if the customer believes that what the chimney sweep is telling them and they buy, they have a revenue producing sale that's going on. But on the other side of the coin, often the consumer is looking for that second opinion from an inspector, and this is key here is, who does not have a vested interest, and that's you. You don't do the chimney repairs, okay? So you're giving them this non-vested opinion on what they have here. So what we're talking about here is all types of chimneys and venting systems, okay? And you're hearing me say the word chimney, and you're also hearing the word venting system. What's the difference in a chimney and a venting system? A chimney is an all-fuel venting source. In other words, if we have a chimney, it can vent oil, gas, wood, uh, the, the, any type of combusted product can be vented through a chimney. When we say the word vent or venting system, that means that it is designed and it is listed for specific fuels, such as B-vent. B-vent is listed for use with gas appliances only. We also have L-vent that is listed for use with low temperature appliances. LVIC can also be used to vent oil appliances when the oil appliance is listed for use with a L vent, and the L stands for low temperature. We have pellet vent. We have all types of different venting systems. On gas, we also have direct vent systems. Direct vent are going to be specialized vent for gas direct vent appliances. And this is where, in order to do this successfully, you're going to have to be trained in depth in order to pursue this. Because if you're not properly trained, you could put your company and yourself in a high issue of litigation from an improper inspection and opinions that you may have offered. So what you're going to be inspected is chimney and venting systems that go to fireplaces. Fireplaces could be site-built masonry fireplaces, or they could be factory-built fireplaces that could be built out of masonry materials shipped in to the site and assembled that are actually built in a factory, or it could be made out of metal. So we're looking at units that are going to, or chimney systems, venting systems, that are going to be venting fireplaces, they're going to be venting wood stoves, it could be a wood stove insert sitting in a fireplace, it could be a furnace, it could be a boiler, it could be water heaters. All these are going to be the various types of appliances that you're going to be inspecting the vending systems for in your particular market areas as you go forth offering this service. If we go to the National Fire Protection Association, we have what's called their 211 standard. And in this, we have the three levels of chimney inspection. Level one 
is basically what you are already doing as a home inspector. A level one inspection, we do not have to get on the roof to do a level one inspection. We are inspecting the readily accessible portions of the chimney and the accessible portions of the appliance and the connector pipe. The level two inspection, we are inspecting all of the accessible areas of the chimney, the connector, and the appliance. On a level two, we're going on the roof. On a level two, we're going under the house, places that you may already be. Now, as far as when we talk above the roof, you could also be accessing above the roof using a drone. If you have a drone in your tool arsenal or an eye stick, which is another way to inspect above the roof. In fact, one of the things is you've also got to balance safety here and getting on the roof and make sure that you're doing that particular level. Now, what can help you in the chimney inspection with your home inspection service is the National Fire Protection Association recommends and actually requires under their standard that anytime property changes hands, that there must be a level two inspection done. And this is one of the common things that has been brought out to me in home inspector conferences. I'm also asked, often asked the question, don't you have to be a certified CSI chimney sweep to do that, certified by CSI? The answer is no. You do not have to be a certified chimney sweep by CSI. And we'll get into certifications in a little bit. But the thing is, you are already licensed to do this under the real estate, under the ins home inspector license that you probably carry. We also have what's called a level three inspection. And a level three inspection is where we're inspecting the concealed areas, the concealed areas that are behind walls. Level three inspections are usually only done when there's an investigation going in because the house is caught on fire. So very few chimney inspectors are ever going to do level three inspections. They're going to do level one and they're going to do level two. Now, under the level two chimney inspection requirements, you have to ascertain the condition of the interior of the flue. In the past, it is said that you had to do this using a video scan device to lower in the chimney or other suitable means. Right now, NFPA is in the, is in the midst of their three-year cycle, and they are changing their standard for the coming year to where a level two inspection will now require that it be done using an interior video inspection device, an interior video inspection device to inspect the inside of that. So these are the major issues and failures of fireplaces and chimneys and vents across the United States. Number one is Conceal clearance issues to combustible framing, okay? This is a big, big area of concern. And to be honest with you, you're not going to be able to see these concealed clearance issues in chimneys. To protect your liability, that's why you're always going to state when you do an inspection of a chimney that you do it to the NFPA level one, level two, or level three inspection standards. So as a chimney inspector, you've got to make that decision and you've got to document that on your report to your client. Big issue, water entry, water entry. As I look about at chimneys across the United States, the number one deteriorating factor that is shortening the lives of masonry chimneys is going to be water entry. Because if we have water entry into the materials, we have what's called freeze-thaw cycles that will rapidly deteriorate the chimney. And most chimneys do not meet the Brick Institute of America standards for keeping the chimney from being wetted. Here's a big one for you. When you look at a chimney, a masonry chimney, and you look up the top of that chimney, we have what's called the chimney crown. 
and the chimney crown, according to Brick Institute of America standards, should overhang the chimney on all four sides. So the water runs off the crown to the ground and doesn't run down the chimney. But a major failing in construction that's done is most masons do not build a crown with that overhanging edge. And this leads to water issue situations where we have rapid deterioration of the system itself. And these are the things that you need to learn in your training is how to spot these water entry issues. We also have a big issue today with pressure issues. Many homes today do not have enough air coming into the home for the air for the home to operate properly. Also, we have many chimneys that are built, and they're built to the standards of construction, which is what we call the 3 to 10 rule as far as height. And what does this mean? That the chimney should protrude out of the roof three foot higher than where it exits the roof and two foot higher than anything in a 10 foot radius. That is not a performance standard. That is a fire standard. So the fire doesn't come out of the chimney and go down and hit the roof. But on many houses, we've got to have more height than that three to 10 rule. What we teach in our chimney performance classes is that the chimney has got to terminate in what we call the zone of negative pressure. So you've got to be trained in how to spot if there are performance issues, and we can train you for that. So as far as where training can be obtained, one place InterNACHI has some chimney and fireplace training on their training module. And if you're on this, I'm presuming you are a member of InterNACHI and you can go through the InterNACHI training. However, you got to go deeper than what InterNACHI has provided there. So here's two sources for you. One is the virtual online platform that we have produced, which is our CBC virtualacademy.com. And on there, there is over 770 courses that you can take and build your expertise in all the specific areas of chimneys, such as the, you know, why do the masonry chimneys deteriorate? Why do the fire, the factory built fireplaces deteriorate? So you can go to that as a source of training. Several years ago, a company by the name of United Infrared came to me and said, Jerry, we want you to develop a course specific for home inspectors for chimney inspection. So for them, I built a course. It's located at chimneyscan.com. And this is a very in-depth course. It's almost it's close to about 10 hours, I think, that takes you through the things as a home inspector to look for. And then certifications. As a rule, in most areas of the country, you're not required to be certified to inspect a chimney. But if you do want to obtain a certification, then some of the organizations you can go to is ncsg.org. This is for the National Chimney Sweep Guild, and they have a program called the Certified Chimney Professional, and they have the Journeyman Chimney Professional that's coming out. And this particular one is going to be a nationally accredited certification in 2023. So it's going to have a lot of power behind that certification to help you market. You can also go to the CSIA.org website, and there you can see the information how to become a CSIA certified chimney suite. You've also got the InterNACHI course that you can take at InterNACHI, and once you complete that course, you will then have a listing there that you will be certified under the Indian and the InterNACHI chimney inspector. Okay, so you got a lot of ways to get into this. You also see my my email address at the bottom of the screen on each of these slides. 
So if I can assist you with this, just send me an email. I'd be glad to get the information to you. We also, in our company, we do live stream training just like this with all types of courses. And we can send instructors to you if you have a company that's large enough or you want to have privatized training come in on chimney and fireplace inspections, we can do that for you. Now, you're probably wondering, what kind of tools are, am, am I going to need to do chimney inspections? Okay, what kind of tools? Well, I've listed them here for you. You're going to need a tape measure. Checking for clearances in, in accessible areas is going to be very important. Most chimneys do not have proper clearance to combustible materials. In IRC, NFPA, and all other code and standards out there, an interior chimney should have a two-inch clearance to combustible material. That means if you go into an attic and you look at where the chimney comes through the attic, there should be a two-inch clearance to the framing members. And that should be also, it should be fire stopped or in IRC, they call it fire blocking now, but you should have that cavity closed up with with non-combustible materials. So you need to be able to inspect for the clearances in many, many areas. You got to be inspecting for the, the, you know, the hearth extension. The hearth extension has some in, insert below six square feet of fireplace opening. It has to be 16 inches of extension out into the room. If it is up six feet or above, it's got to extend 20 inches out into the room. You've also got to be able to compute the flue size to make sure that the flue size is large enough to properly vent the fireplace. On a fireplace system, we take a flue and we want it to be a minimum of one-tenth of the fireplace opening if it is a square or rectangular flue system. If it is a round flue system, then we want it to be one twelfth of the fireplace opening. You're going to need a flashlight. You're going to be looking down into the chimney, those type of things like that. You got to be able to illuminate your work area. You got to be able to see up the chimney from the bottom through the damper to see what does the chimney itself look like. We suggest you have a mirror. And the mirror has a couple different processes. Number one, a mirror on a sunny day makes a great flashlight. I can take a mirror and reflect the sun off the mirror and shine it down the flue and give myself a very bright illumination of that flue area. Something else we do with mirrors is if we have a thimble of breaching where the pipe goes in the wall, we can take the mirror, go down into the thimble, hold it at an angle, and then we can see up the flue area. So a, a mirror is something that's going to give you ability to see a lot of things. You need to be able to have the ability to see colors. And when we say this, you're wanting to see is, is the exterior of the chimney discolored in any way? If you see a chimney that is discolored, that is telling you we have a water entry issue. So you need to be able to distinguish the difference in the colors. You've also got to be able to distinguish colors around the fireplace in case the fireplace is spilling smoke and gases and it is staining the fireplace facade above the opening. We need our checklist to go by. The checklist of items that we're going to be looking at. The checklist that we go by. I'm a big guy on SOPs. So what you've got to do is, is build your standard operating procedures and how to follow for the chimney inspection process. And actually, we have a lot of this that we can share with you in our training of what you do here. You got to have a knowledge of the standard of care. The standard of care is what you are required to do by law, by the court system. And that's where you got to also have to understand that you have a responsibility. In order, other words, if you're doing a chimney inspection, part of your standard of care is is the you have to pass the burden to act to your client. You've got to inform them. You have less clear chance. If there is something wrong that could be dangerous, it could be construed that you have the last clear chance to warn that customer, to warn that consumer that they have a problem. 
you're going to need to have a digital camera. This can be your smartphone. It can be a regular digital camera, but you got to be able to take photographs of everything you're inspecting. And in today's world, you're storing this digitally. When I go back to much earlier in my career, we didn't have digital cameras. We were using a lot of 35 millimeter cameras in those days. We were also using a lot of Polaroid cameras to record it. In today's world, digital photography is now a part of an inspector's life. You got to develop your forms, your software. You got to have a system to report this to the customer. Boroscopes and endoscopes. Boroscopes and endoscopes are basically the same thing. They are going to be small cameras that you can insert through a small hole in the wall. You know, and some people call them boroscopes, some people call them endoscopes. They're basically the same thing. And this is maybe a tool that you've already got within your process, within your tool bag that you're using now. The next one you may not have, or you may have. If you're doing sewer inspections, Wohler makes a sewer camera that converts to a chimney inspection camera but you're going to need an interior video inspection camera system in order to inspect the interior of the chimney itself. We recommend that you have an infrared camera. Why do we suggest an infrared camera? Because on a chimney, the infrared camera can show you in a digital form where the water penetration is. It can also show you areas that are overheating. We also suggest that you have a pressure gauge, a manometer that can read Pascals. Why are we reading Pascals? Because in order for the fireplace to operate properly, we have to supply the fireplace with a minimum amount of air, and we've got to make sure that we have a positive Pascal reading in the area where the fireplace is so we have proper performance. Laser thermometers. Very cheap tool. And what are we using this for? To help us spot problems in the house with pressure issues. You got to get on the roof. You got to be able to inspect above the roof line. So that means you're going to have to go onto the roof. Or if you have a drone, you can use the drone for this. And I also think that iStick camera is a miraculous tool for a lot of chimney, and excuse me, for a lot of home inspectors to use. And I suggest that to a lot of my people in the chimney sweep industry to look at this iStick because we're real concerned about people falling off of roofs today and the hazards we face from being in high places comes into OSHA and what their requirements are uh, as far as safety and getting on roofs. But that's basically the tools that you're going to need to do. So what you've got to do is you got to get trained for this and you have got to get your tooling up to do this and you got to build your marketing process of how you're going to take this to market. You know, I was at a home inspectors conference about two years ago, three years ago, right before COVID. And I met a home inspector there. He's from the state of Alabama. And he was sharing with me, he was doing chimney inspections as part of his home inspection, along with other add-on services. And he shared with me that his average revenue from a home inspection service was now between $1,500 and $2,000. Now, in order to get that, he was marketing at the highest level and he was selling the value of what he could do for his customer. So how do you market this? Well, it's just like your home inspection service. You've got to have your website out there using SEO. You've also got GMB, which is Google My Business. And internet websites this marketing means continues to change every time we turn around. So what you need to do, if you hopefully you have a professional website company that manages and makes changes to your website. So what you've got to do is, is communicate with them. Social media, social media. Yeah, a lot of people don't want to do it. They think it's crazy. 
They don't want to get on there. They're thinking, hey, it's just a waste of time. But in today's world, social media is how you get the word out to your customers, to your community. And who is your community? The community is composed of two people. Number one, the people that buy from you. And number two, the people that may buy from you. So you've got to become known in your community as the authority in what you do. It takes more this day and time than just hanging your shingle up and saying, hey, I'm a home inspector. Hey, I do chimney inspection. You got to get out and you got to promote these things. Building up blogs on your website. Blogs are going to be written articles that give you content and all and your social media and your website is going to be using keywords to integrate this into so people find you with search engine engine optimization, which is how websites bring people to you is from the SEO. You should have company brochures that are telling you telling customers what you do. I'm also a big proponent of making videos, getting those up onto social media and onto your website. Again, what are we doing? We're speaking to our community, making up the brochures like we talked about. And lastly, market to your existing customer base. The people you've done in the past, let them know, hey, we now offer chimney inspection. So let us know if we can help you. If you need to get your chimney inspected to make sure everything's okay for the winter, hey, we're the company that can provide this service for you now. So you've heard me talk about some terms. You've heard me talk about site-built chimneys and fireplaces. And what are these? These are our masonry fireplaces that are all over the United States. And they're built out of brick, block, mortar, stone, those type of things. In the case of a site-built fireplace, site-built chimney, we are following the guidelines of the International Residential Code. But in today's world, the majority of homes that are built today are using factory-built units. These are going to be manufactured of metal or masonry, and we even have plastic venting now that's going out into the world on some of the central heating systems that are out there. So here, the standards on this will be the laboratory listing, not the building code. So again, this is what you've got to learn from the training is how to understand and inspect all of these various type things that are out there in the real world. What are we inspected for? We have a lot of damage from the acids produced in the combustion products. No matter what type of fuel that you are using, it will always result in acids being conducted into the chimney in the combustion products. These acids are breaking down the chimneys prematurely, prematurely. We have a damage from a lack of proper maintenance, okay? As I said earlier, many chimneys have never been inspected. Many chimneys are never swept. There is a lack of maintenance across America that's resulting in problems with the chimneys and ventings that are out there in the real world. We have damage from external forces, such as settlement, lightning, tornadoes, high winds, hurricanes. Just this past week, we had a major earthquake in Northern California. And I'm already seeing pictures of chimneys that have been torn apart and taken to the ground because of this earthquake that's happening out there. But we have settlement going on, all kinds of things. Then we have our everyday forces. We got rain. We got freeze thaw. We have a constantly changing environment, and we have ultraviolet rays even. And all of these things are damaging to the chimneys and shortening the life of these on our customers' homes. Not only this, a bad chimney is going to be harmful to the health of the occupants of that home. When you look at home inspector licensing requirements, I'm from North Carolina. I can still remember when home inspectors were first licensed in the state of North Carolina. And the home inspector was licensed to the following words, to protect the health, the safety, and the welfare of the public and their homes. 
So this is no more than helping you build what you do amongst the people that you work with right right now every single day. So it's a, again, this is a service that can provide better quality of life for your customers. And it can provide a higher earning revenue for you. We're looking for these things. Issues resulting from the use of improper or substandard materials during construction. See, building code standards have changed in the last 20 to 40 years, such as a fireplace has what's called a smoke chamber above it. The smoke chamber is where the smoke goes after it leaves the fireplace throat or the damper. And when we have a smoke chamber in the early part of the 21st century, all of a sudden they changed the code to require that smoke chambers now need to be parged. That went into the International Residential Code in the year 2000. In the year 2006, it went into the National Fire Protection Association standards. We also saw where now the, the type of mortar used in chimneys used to be common mortar. Now it's specified that you've got to use a mortar inside of a chimney that is tested and listened to the standards of ASTM 199C. It is also what we call a non-water soluble refractory mortar. A non-water soluble refractory mortar is one that's made for high temperature applications and water does not break it down. We have issues from bad workmanship. I hate to say this, but brick mesas, many of them have never been properly trained in how to build a chimney, a fireplace system. And I see all of these problems that you wonder, how in the world does somebody make this so bad? We also have piles of issue resulting from failure to follow codes and standards with site-built units. And we also have a problem that many times factory-built units are not following the manufacturer's instructions that are published as part of the listing. And again, this is why in order to do this properly, you've got to be trained. If you put your shingle out there and you say, hey, we do chimney inspections, and you're not properly trained of what to look for, to be honest with you, you're going to have potential issues with litigation down the road because bad things have happened and you're getting blamed for this, okay? It's the real, real world as it is. Chimneys and fireplaces went through a tremendous evolution in the, late, in the last several hundred years. If we go back prior to the year 2000. Do you know that it was standard that you could build a chimney out of wood, just like you see here? That particular fireplace you're looking at was from the barracks of a United States military base. It was a common way that chimneys were built on the prairie and in the 17th, 18th, and into the 19th century. All of a sudden, when we got into the 20th century, all of a sudden, they came out with a new standard and said, hey, chimneys have got to be built out of brick. But then later in the 20th century, in 1952, a gentleman by the name of Robert K. Thoman invented the factory built fireplace. And once he invented the factory built fireplace, we started having wooden chimneys built, which are chases, and then the fireplace is embedded inside of them. Here's the problem. Many of these chases have improper clearance. They also have water entry issues, and we have premature deterioration, mold, and rot, and it's creating health issues in addition to the safety issues that are out there. These are the problems that are in the very real world because construction codes and standards have changed tremendously over the last 120 years. I've done very deep research into the history. I probably have the largest library of historical artifacts dating all the way back into the 14th century and into European methods of construction. So we have seen such changes in what's allowed and where we're at today. So what you've got to do to be successful in this, you've got to know past and current codes in your market area and the construction practices also are vastly important so you know what's going on. So chimneys and vents, 
What well, you know, these are the things we're looking for. Does it perform? In other words, does the smoke go out? Does it work? Has it ever been maintained? Is it protected from the elements? Were proper materials and methods utilized? And does it present a potential hazard to the occupant of the home and to the structure itself? That's the goal of the chimney inspection of what you're doing. And see, when you go through this, what we're going to, you know, if you go through the training where you can start visualizing what you're looking at. And a lot of times you're going to see where there's stacked fireplace. You had a fireplace on an upper floor and one on a lower floor. And we have a lot of offsets and we find a lot of gaps and leakage points into the system. So being able to see what's going on with the chimney, looking at it from the ground, that's one of the things we teach in our training is how to do these things. Walking into a home and looking at the fireplace. And when I look at this fireplace, you'll see I've got a yellow air, air drum. What am I pointing to with the yellow air? If you'll notice, you can see where the side wall has smoke built up on it. That is an indication that we have poor performance and spillage because air should be coming in all the way to the top of the fireplace, and we should never see smoke building up on the side. We can see above the fireplace where we got a problem. We can see that the fireplace is extremely deep. And when we have very deep fireplaces, that's going to give us problems. The American Mason feels like that the bigger he can build the fireplace to hold more wood, the better he's done. But what he's actually done is hurt the system. So you're looking at diagrams of different types of fireplaces, of thimbles, other things that are out there. So that's what you've got to learn about as you go through this. You've got to learn about all the parts, what to inspect for, and in order to provide a report that serves your customer well and also protects your liability. So I think it is a something. Again, it is a process. And as a home inspector that's on this course or maybe listening to this in the recorded version, what you've got to do to reap the benefits of this, which can be monumental to you, first off, you've got to make the decision, is this something that you want to do, that you want to add to your offerings? Number two, you've got to get the required training in order to do this properly. If not, you could put yourself in a heap of trouble out there in the real fear, in the real world. Number three, you got to develop the marketing plan. This is not going to work for you unless you understand how to market it. You can't just pick it up. It would be like going to the Sahara Desert as a trained hunter, but there's no game there. So what you've got to do is be able to get that market plan together. And then the next thing is you got to implement it. There are so many people that hear good ideas and they simply sit on their hands and they never do nothing to take it to rotation. So this is the process. This is what you can do. This is how you can go to a much higher level and increase the revenue in your business, take it up, and build your business up to a higher, much higher level. So AJ, I'm checking the chat right now. Is, does anyone have any questions that they would ask me? Is it true that, fire, that factory built fireplaces are usually non-repairable? That is exactly right because the problem is Many of the fireplaces that are out there have been discontinued from manufacture and there are no parts and there is no aftermarket parts that allow. So when a factory built fireplace gets to a certain point of disrepair, what can happen at that point is the only acceptable way to do this is to tear the fireplace out and put a new fireplace in. It's the only process there is. And also, you've got to look at this. Factory built fireplaces have been out there for about 
since 1952 is when they were introduced by Mr. Thoman. So many of them and some market share has been out there for more than 25 and some more than 50 years. I mean, I'm 69 years old and I was born in 1953. So, you know, there's fireplaces old as I am and they have reached the end of their usable lifespan. The other thing that goes on with factory built fireplaces is many times the chase covers are not watertight. The chases are leaking water. The metal is in there. It's a galvanized metal. It's not going to hold up to ongoing um, water entry. So yes, you're exactly right. They are usually non-repairable. If converting over to a gas fireplace, a good alternative for preparing fireplaces and chimneys. It can be the pro, you know, it depends on the amount of damage in there that's in the chimney. But yes, if you look at the manufacturer's installation instructions on those fireplace inserts, it will usually tell you that you need to install it in a code compliant chimney. So it's a big thing back and forth. Personally, I think it will function fine in there, and I would refer that to the authority having jurisdiction in that area. But also, a lot of people think that putting gas logs in a fireplace that's damaged is a, a cure, and it's not. Because a set of gas logs, whether it is vented or it is vented, is vent-free, requires a chimney in a fireplace that is suitable for wood burning in order to install gas logs in there. Is a lot of inspection equipment needed to do a proper chimney inspection. If you look back at the list that I gave you earlier on here, and I'll take it back to it. Let me share the screen again, and let's go back to all that, and I'll take you back to that slide. And you may want to just make a photo. You make a photo of this if you want to. Let me go back to the tooling. Okay, right now on the screen. What you're looking at is the tooling that you should have if you're going to do inspections. As far as a chimney inspection camera, you can go from the low end and get a camera for a couple hundred bucks. You can spend 4,000. If you go into some of the Waller cameras, you'll be up in a $7,000 price tag. But to be honest with you, you really need the good, good stuff in order to do that interior inspection. And I would look at the various equipment that's available. You got Waller that produces equipment. You got ChimScan that produces equipment. You got another company called SnapLock that produces equipment. And there's this, and some people are actually using their their iPhones and using that as an inspection tool. The hardest thing is, is making sure if you're using a wireless camera that the signal will go to your monitor and in some of the wireless situations, that's going to be a problem. So a camera can cost you anywhere from $300, $400 up to as much as $7,000. You can get a class act camera up in the $4,000 range. Okay, any other questions, feel free to type them in. Okay, I'm not seeing any other questions come up. You have my email address on the screen in front of you right now. So feel free to email me if you have any questions whatsoever. And I want to thank you for being with us today. I love to share my message, to share the story with other people. I love, I took your class. It is good. Thank you, Laura. I thought that I recognized your name up while ago, and I thought you had been some of my classes. So what she's talking about here is, I, okay, Jim, uh, what she's talking about, she went to some of the classes I think I did live at various events around the country, but those are usually 90 minute presentations. And really it's gonna take a lot more than 90 minutes to go in depth into this. So Charles, I appreciate your your words there, great information. So folks, if we can re help you in any way to get into this, you've got my email address, feel free to reach out to me at any time.